You are more than the story you've been telling yourself. But sooner or later, your awareness of any story you tell yourself, whether it's a psychological interpretation about your childhood, it's still just a story in your mind. And who you are is so much more than that. Who you truly are starts right now. That's a basic law of now. Touch this life, this moment, whatever it is, gently, as it is, and you will thrive. I truly believe if we're going to solve the problems of the planet and solve the problems of conflict between us, each of us has to make the journey back to that essential part of ourselves. The talk that I'm doing today will last approximately 55 minutes, and it's entitled The Primordial Teachings. Now, the title is a little bit daunting because when you think of the word primordial, you think of dinosaurs and ancient teachings, and you think of the energy related to ancient times and in the past. In Buddhism, primordial refers to the part of ourselves that existed before we had a soul. And the highest form of enlightenment refers to the part of us that returns to that original primordial being that we all have, that we all possess. This primordial aspect of ourselves fires our spiritual growth. It fires our spiritual search and our path. Each one of us that are here is being propelled by something we don't understand. We know, for instance, that we are derived from stars. We know that. We know that everybody here used to live in a higher, more exalted state of being. But at some point, we fell from that consciousness. And so now we're all scrambling to get ourselves back, to understand what it takes to overcome the realm of karma, the realm of suffering, the realm of being in this world, living and dying, and then forgetting it all and doing it all over again. I, for one, don't want to do that again in this lifetime or any other lifetime. So this talk, actually this introduction to a series of talks, is a course that I teach called the Primordial Teachings. Primordial Teachings came into this world from ancient cultures, primarily Taoism and Buddhism. They emerge as some of the most sacred teachings that you can get, and they are primarily from the mouth of a master to the ear of a student. But we live in a very perilous time. This is one of the times when the earth can end. In mankind's history, we've never lived in a time where we can be the last species on the planet. There are a number of theories as to what might happen. There are a number of ideas to help us try to understand what might happen. But this is one of those times when the higher universe has said, we're going to reveal things to this species, to this part of mankind that we've never told them before. Because in these times, there are things that come into being that we've never had access to. The sacred worlds reveal themselves at times of serious change. This planet must either evolve or perish. And our sun, which is the source of all of our light, of all of our energy, of all of our life, it is so much an integral part of our being that if it were to go out eight minutes from now, everybody in here would freeze. So what are our primordial teachings? What does that refer to exactly? These are images that were taken from a spacecraft um, put up by the Japanese called the uh, Yoko spacecraft, which orbits the sun at a one million mile orbit. I didn't know that either. We have spacecraft that actually orbit the sun. And what the spacecraft has been showing is that the sun is changing. If you look at the dark rightmost image, that's how the sun looked in 1991. In 1995, the sun had changed tremendously. This is over just a four year period. And these images were taken four months apart. It shows that the sun's output of X-rays and UV rays has increased by a factor of 20. Scientists don't really have a good explanation for that. We also recognize that sunspots have increased many-fold over any other time period in history that we've ever measured. We've also measured a tremendous increase in the magnetic field of the sun. 
For one thing, we don't know why the sun has a magnetic field. A lot of stars don't have a magnetic field, but our sun does. Our sun's energy at this point is, is at a 1,000 year peak. And in the last 60 years, it's putting out more energy than in the previous almost 1,100 years. Now, what does that mean for us? What is that fact, that scientific fact, what does it have to do for us here on the Earth? For one thing, scientists are now believing that our global warming is in part related to the increase in solar energy. We've noticed that not only has the sun increased in temperature, so has Mars, so has Pluto, so has Jupiter. And many of the planets in the solar system are now much warmer. Mars has almost lost its polar ice caps in the same way that our ice caps are being attenuated. We can't really say that Martians are driving Chevys and Fords and causing that ice cap to leave, at least not that I know of. So we can say that there's really no man-made contribution to Mars losing their polar caps. Unless somebody has some data that I don't know, this would be the place to ask that question. <laughs> Scientists at Duke reported just a few years ago that at least 10 to 30 percent of our global warming is related to what's going on with the sun and that the direct contribution of the sun's rays and the increase in that energy is causing our planet to change. Also, some researchers at Columbia University have corroborated that. One thing that's happening that most people don't know about and that's happening in this world that our wonderful media don't report to us is we're in the middle of the biggest mass extinction in 65 million years. Now, the definition of a mass extinction says that 50% of a species that inhabit a planet have to die. So to put it simply, half of all the species on this planet have died in the last 50 years. There are about 10 million species on Earth, and we're losing about 50 species a day. Now, fortunately, most of these are plants and bacteria. Unfortunately, we need plants and bacteria to live. Some of the most famous species are bees. Half of all the bees are gone. Frogs. Half of all the frogs are gone. I could go on for a day just with that. But evolutionarily, this has never happened, at least that we can tell. We have never seen a time when our species has been part of a mass extinction of such a very fast um, archaeological uh, frequency. If you look at this graph, you can see that sunspot activity, actually I borrowed this from Al Gore. This was one of his great graphs from that talk that he did that he I uh, got the uh, Nobel Prize for, I believe. You can see that over the last 150 years or thereabouts, sunspot activity has gone up tremendously. At this time, we have more sunspots being recorded than at any other time in history. And this is from the Antarctic readings and from Greenland. Our best scientific recordings are rendered from those two observation stations. Our global temperatures mirror sunspot activity. Global temperatures have gone up over the average five of the last hundred years or so by almost a full one to two degrees. Scientists say that if our global temperature goes up six degrees, mankind and all the species here run the risk of extinction. Now, when you look at the increase in the solar energy, there's something that you see that affects us directly. Skin cancer from 1973 to the year 2000 has gone up more than threefold all over the world. These are numbers that the World Health Organization doesn't report to the masses. They don't let us know this sort of thing. What I'm pointing to is not a lecture on the climate and the sun. It, it's, it's a discussion of energy that is affecting us and is mutating not only the planet, but our species. One of the mutations that's occurring